I would like to share with you what I have learned from the 14-year-old boys I work with. They have taught me that there is great value when men are vulnerable in front of other men and why that should matter to all of us. I'd like you all to think back to when you were 14. Close your eyes if you like and really bring yourself back to that age. What were you like? Who did you look up to? What were you curious about? What was your favorite song or band? Who was your best friend? Did you ever feel pressure to act a certain way because of your gender? When I was 14, it was the 90s. <laughs> no, my mushroom cut, my Chandler Bing inspired shirt, and my yin yang necklace. This is peak 90s fashion right here. I was obsessed with collecting pogs, making mixtapes, and my favorite band was the Cranberries. When I was uh, 14, my best friend was a great listener. She kept all my secrets and never told anyone about it. My best friend was also my dog. When I was 14, I had a rough time because I was gay and I knew it. I also knew that being gay was one of the worst things a guy could be. I knew this because every time I heard or saw a guy being mocked or bullied, he was either called gay or a girl. So gay or feminine was the worst thing a guy could be. So I tried everything I could to avoid being labeled those things. In grade seven, I joined band and I decided to learn the flute. <laughs> Not a great start. I soon realized being one of two flute players in the whole school, this was not an instrument guys played. I quickly switched the saxophone, leaving the flute for the girls and the one boy that seemed to love it. I played sports, I played hockey, soccer, baseball, track. Secretly, I wanted to explore dance and figure skating, but I knew those activities would, would be labeled gay or girly. I stayed clear of other boys as they made me feel anxious. I knew about an unwritten code that boys and men were supposed to follow. I knew that hanging out with other guys would mean having to play the part of something I wasn't, to be one of the guys, be masculine. This is a performance that I felt bound to fail because it wasn't me. And I worried that my lack of masculinity would lead to ridicule about my orientation, because it often did. There is one particular memory from that time that has stuck with me, and will forever. There was a young man in the same class as me who was constantly made fun of for being effeminate. He got called all the names that I did, but received it a lot more frequently than me. And I distinctly remember distancing myself from him and disliking him because he had many of the same qualities that I learned to hate in myself. He was the other boy that played the flute. Unlike me, he continued playing it regardless of the names he was called. And I watched him get harassed and bullied every day for not being masculine enough. And instead of reaching out, I kept my distance and felt thankful that the harassment wasn't happening to me. One Friday morning, walking into school, there was a cold hush that washed over everyone. I saw people crying and secrets whispered into ears. When I arrived in class, our teacher looked out at our 14-year-old faces and had the grim responsibility of informing us that our classmate had taken his own life. The news gripped me like an icy hand around my neck. I didn't know why he chose what he did, but I did know that how he was treated must have impacted him as it had me. This experience changed me. I became aware that I wasn't the only guy to experience these pressures. Pressure to live up to this masculine ideal or rejecting all that's considered feminine in ourselves. I speak to the male experience because it's been my lived experience. But gender expectations happen to everyone. And human lives are at stake. Now that I work with young men, I am reminded that being male still comes with this pressure to maintain masculinity by fitting into what many refer to as the man box. That is, be tough, be in control, keep your emotions in check, and stay away from any behavior deemed feminine. This is limiting. It leaves little room for vulnerability and individuality. It became clear to me that boys needed a place to talk about these pressures, a place free of judgment, a place to be vulnerable. I work with an incredible team of people who have dedicated a lot of time and energy to unpacking what all this means. It's been hard, but we've come up with something. Our idea was to create a safe, space, a safe space for boys to talk about how it feels to be a man. 
Each week, my colleagues and I spend the majority of our times hanging out with 14-year-old boys at their schools in a program that we created. It's called Wise Guys. A lot of the time is spent hanging out with the guys and having them tell us stories about video games or, or fart stories or uh, <laughs> the big sporting event they have coming up. But more importantly, tucked into those conversations are two generations of men hanging out and having many real conversations about how it feels to be a man in today's society and discussing the powers or the privileges and social uh, powers that come along with that. As facilitators, it is our chance to create the space that we never had, to give the boys a safe place to talk about anything from relationships, sex, porn, anything without fear or judgment. The space we've created is safe and it's different and we make it safe by having a set of rights that we revisit it at the beginning of each session. Everyone has the right to participate, to pass, to privacy, to respect, and to fun. We explain that these rules expand beyond wise guys to include the many real relationships we have in our lives. We continue to make it safe by encouraging the boys to be vulnerable because vulnerability is what makes spaces safe. Anecdotally, this idea is great. However, we've been doing research that shows that our intuition was right and we're actually seeing changes. In the five years we've been working on the Wise Guys program, we've been evaluating our progress. <clears throat> we've had many focus groups with the boys, and the number one thing that comes out of those focus groups is that boys need a space just for them to hang out and talk about feelings. We distributed surveys before and then again after the program, and what we saw at the end of the program was a significant increase in knowledge around sexual health, challenging homophobia, sexism, and stereotypical notions of masculinity. In the space we've created, we've seen the boys connect with each other, make new friends, and express comfort with who they are. The boys have taught us that creating a safe space is really quite simple, and we've broken it down into four pillars. I asked a few of the boys that I work with to write down their thoughts about these pillars, and I'll let them share with you what they came up with. The first is belonging. Being a part of Wise Guys kind of felt like I was a part of a community. It kind of brought us together, like I was friends with some of the people there, but not all. And as the weeks went by, we all got closer, and being in Wise Guys made me feel accepted, like I could speak my mind. In fact, it was so much of a community that by the third week, we stopped playing video games and just talked. The first thing we can do to become a safe person and make a safe space is establish a sense of belonging. Each time we meet with the guys, we have a check-in. Everyone gets a chance to talk about what they've been up to and what they're interested in. We show interest by asking questions. We listen to them. This demonstrates equality, builds trust and friendships. The next pillar is consciousness. It's a question of acceptance. It's like the problem part is how specifically homosexuality is attributed to something lesser. Like when something is bad, you say, oh, that's so gay. And the people in Wise Guys, somehow, they just found a way around that stuff. You would hear other people saying it, and then you would catch it. You don't just catch it, but you're like, hey, that's not right. Becoming aware and conscious was a huge part of my own learning. I had to learn and then unlearn common phrases that were potentially harmful to other people. The next pillar is empathy. I always kind of knew when I'd see the loser or the stoner, I'd know that they have a heart. They're human. I've been taught to accept them, but I only really kind of like, understood it once I was in Wise Guys. I could see like, yeah, you're just me in a different skin. We're all guys. We all think alike. We have a lot in common. Empathy is the motivation behind all of this. Once we can imagine another person's experience, we can then figure out what we can do that can make a huge difference to someone else. Empathy is putting ourselves in another person's shoes, being curious about one another, and when we do that, it fuels connection. The last pillar is safety itself. Wise Guys was this new thing for us. None of us knew how it would be like. Over the year, we got pretty close. It was this place we could all take our questions about dudes, and we learned that there are other guys out there that were going through this similar thing. If we, can't, if we don't feel safe, we can't be our authentic self. Feeling safe means stepping outside of the man box, feeling comfortable to be who you are, and having other people accept you. If we try our best not to judge others, it allows other people to feel safe in our presence. When we feel safe, we relax, we open up. 
It's where great friendships and relationships start. We ask a lot of the boys we work with. We ask them to show up every week. We ask them to let their guards down. We ask them to step outside of the man box. And that can be scary. But when we do it, it has such an impact. And I don't think vulnerability is something that can simply be taught. I think vulnerability is something that has to be modeled. So I decided to come out to the boys for the first time. And I was super nervous because I didn't know how it would go. And I didn't know if they would treat me differently. So I prepared a speech and I sat them down. And I was like, boys, it's really important when, when we, uh, we're vulnerable with each other because it helps us reshape our idea of what's masculine. And they, they're 14 year old boys. None of them were listening to me at all. <laughs> so I just stood up and said, so yeah, I'm gay. And then the room went silent. And they all just stared at me for like 20 seconds. And then finally, one of the boys said, seriously? <laughs> yeah, I said, I'm not straight. And then they just stared at me again. And then they clapped. <laughs> it was awesome. It was an awesome moment. <laughs> It felt really great to be real with them and to share with them my truth and to let go of this anxiety that I've been carrying with me my whole life. And the next day, I got a message from one of the boys thanking me for my honesty and wanted to let me know that he also wasn't straight and that it felt really good to know someone like him. Uh, this, is, this is tough work. I don't do it alone. I couldn't. I work with an amazing team of guys that has helped me bring this to reality. I'd like to invite them to the stage right now to help me finish this off. Uh, this is Stafford, Tristan, and Ian. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. So what if you can't be in Wise Guys? What if you're not 14 anymore, which tends to happen? <laughs> These four pillars that we rely on in Wise Guys can apply to all of us. If we allow ourselves to be open and vulnerable, in the way you've seen from Blake tonight, uh, if we allow ourselves to become aware of the language we use and the space that we take up, it can make the world of difference for those around us. Blake has had that influence on me, on, on all of us. And it feels like this is the beginning of a, of a growing movement. Yeah, and uh, we want the space that we create in Wise Guys to be commonplace. So I often think about safe spaces as this thing that you carry with you. Uh, we all have our imaginary personal space bubble that we take around with us and when we interact with new people, but I think we have a safe space bubble too. And so our actions and our language and our words, uh, that tells other people if we're a safe bubble to bump into or not. Yeah, uh, together we have the capacity to reimagine uh, the paradigm of masculinity is something more inclusive, uh, richer, and something that celebrates difference rather than stamping it out. It starts with individuals. It starts with us. Uh, we have the responsibility to embrace that vulnerability within ourselves rather than retreating back into the box. And if we embrace that vulnerability, we can inspire others to do the same. It took a terrible tragedy for me to realize that something needed to change. And I don't want to hear about tragedies like that anymore. The idea is simple. Boys deserve more than boys will be boys. I dream of a day where men and women and people of all different genders and orienta orientations feel safe to be themselves. We dream of a day when the word masculinity becomes the plural masculinities and men and boys feel supported to be the men they want to be. Thanks so much. <laughs>